We know what's best for the greater good, but we can't bring ourselves to do it. If it's the only real issue that we have right now. This property was on the market and I said, well, this would be great, we can grow into it. It's hard talking to some of these people who are like, oh, it's such a great place to come down and we can buy a vacation house. It's like, could you not actually? <laughs> what would you say to someone who says, well, you're just not paying enough. The community is very shattered. But housing is something that it's not a game of monopoly. The people need homes. And then it goes back to, well, who are we to think that they yeah. shouldn't have the opportunity to sell it for a high profit? So who steps in? Exactly. Hello, everyone. So today's video is going to be about a solution that this woman has to the affordable housing crisis that we are in right now. Chances are, whatever city you're in, there is a problem with the working class finding an affordable place to live. Well, this woman has a solution and she has walked the walk. She has put her own money and resources into this idea. And actually where we're at right now, it was one of her projects. So stick around and we're all gonna learn something new today. And maybe this is something that you can take home to your own city. Hey! <laughs> Hello! You met my welcome. <laughs> I love this welcome dog. How are you? <laughs> Very well. Good to see you. Yeah, likewise. Oh, yeah, two of them. <laughs> yeah, so this guy is supposed to be on lockdown. He's uh, got a hurt back. <laughs> Such is life. We're here for the video and the furniture guy shows up. Now we could finally Introduce have a ourselves. conversation, <laughs> Maggie. So now tell me what it is that you had created. Would you say that this is a solution? It is definitely a solution. All right, so what is this solution? What is your solution? Community land trust law is brilliant. It's underutilized, and I don't think people understand it. It's complicated because, in a, in a way, it's complicated, but it's also simple. It's exactly what those three words mean. The land is held by the community. It's mm -hmm. managed, it's um, governed by local stakeholders. It's funded by a variety of sources, uh, private, public. I think the most beautiful thing about it is that it's 99 years, if you, if you so choose. So I bought a bunch of property and I set out to build as much of it as I could. And within the first couple of years, we had four houses. And this was, when did this start? Uh, like October of 17. Okay, a so month, this was a month after six, Irma. Six so for those after. of you who are watching who do not live in the Florida Keys, uh, we had a hurricane, Category 5, was it? That five, yeah. pretty much destroyed the, uh, the middle of the Florida Keys. All of the Florida Keys were affected, but it destroyed where we're at right now. And so what you're seeing here are a lot of new development. And uh, when Irma did hit, a lot of people had to leave because they could no longer afford to live here. And so this is now where you come in. Yep. So this is after Irma, a month after Irma, you bought up how many lots? And this is actually one right here. 57. 57 lots. Uh, scattered sites uh, and a trailer park. Well, an RV park. Yeah. And uh, I sought to deed restrict every one of them as workforce housing. Was there a, a housing crisis that you had already noticed prior to Irma? I was oblivious to it. So it was just kind of, was it even forward thinking that there was going to be an issue? Or you just wanted to buy up parcels because you knew that there was going to be... Uh, well, I feared. I feared yeah. that someone would come in we'll with profits, you know, in mind. And yeah, and which, which did happen a lot. But, and so I thought, well, if I, if I buy these, I can decide what, what happens to them because they'll be mine. And then ultimately they'll be in the hands of the community. There were requirements. You, you couldn't live here if it was gonna be your second home. You couldn't be a tenant if you were a retired person. I mean, nothing against retired people. We need all, all kinds of people in the community, but we absolutely have to have a workforce. In our first four cottages, you, uh, the household income couldn't exceed 80% of the area median income for Monroe County, which is um, higher than a lot of other parts of the country because we have a lot of wealthy people here. And, uh, which I thought would actually, you know, benefit the nonprofit because they would see that um, 
this is a problem that money can solve. In your words, define affordable housing. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's really simple. 30% of your, um, your gross household income per year. And then you've got enough money to meet your other needs besides housing. Nobody here pays only 30%. Yeah, it's, it's always 50%. like 50 or sometimes even more than that. Yeah. And then you become this person who has no quality of life. And this is so this is another one of your places. Yeah, this is the second cottage. Um, the, the first family is still here. Uh, they are a young couple with two elementary school age kids. Uh, he works in construction and she works at a restaurant. And so what is the monthly cost for them oh I wish I knew let's let's find that out and it's changed over time it yeah. used to be the first four cottages we rented for 990 some dollars a month brand it, new two bedroom one bath furnished cottages with laundry wow I mean it was incredible and now no matter what though is the idea to at least break even so the monthly rent cost will just be what it costs to to pay off the mortgage and the insurance well, there are no mortgages um, so because we, we paid everything out and we sold the ground to the county that helped fund the construction of the, of the actual dwelling. So, you know, it takes a lot of money to do anything down here. Yeah. Construction is, is no exception. So uh, the, the designer that designed these first four cottages, she says, being poor is really expensive. Yeah, it sure is. And so th this, these families that we help would never be able to provide this kind of stability for mm -hmm. themselves. It's just not possible because of the expense down here. So the county participated. We had some really wonderful uh, support from local charities. Too soon, the, the funding for Irma Relief dried up. Yeah. And then other storms happened and other problems occurred. And, and then we're forgotten. Yep. You know, I, w I really set out to be this the single family home habitat. And we did it. We I proved the concept that it could be done. And really funding was the, the main obstacle, which is maddening because my father-in-law told me years ago, don't ever worry about problems that money can solve. I wanted to just keep building like one after another. I didn't want to wait, you know, but, but it takes money and we didn't have it. So we said, the county said, well, we can, we can participate in this program with you. We'll, we'll help you continue. But then we kind of lost our traction. I'm just trying to get a better understanding of the person who is making the investment is is using their like for you, for instance, you use your you your, are using your own money yep. to make this happen. Yep. OK, so now <laughs> it's it seems mad, doesn't it? it oh, I mean, crazy. it does. It, it, there's an end result that that everyone can better understand, and myself yeah. as well, Yeah. then it may not sound maddening. So you buy this property with your own money, your intention is not to lose anything from this, right. nor to gain. Exactly, yeah. So it's just as long as you are selling or renting the place. Oh yeah, so are you renting or selling? Well, I initially wanted to sell because I didn't realize that renting was an option. Okay. The county said, we prefer for you to rent these units. And at first I didn't like that, but what are you gonna say to someone who's gonna tell you they're gonna give you $400,000? Because they gave us 100,000 toward the land of underneath each cottage. Uh, so anyway, we agreed to rent, which actually I like better because you ha you, the renters get recertified every year and I think you get to have maybe a, a better relationship with them. I think once you sell it, it kind of, it gets lost in the shuffle well, and then the who one, knows if the people who are living there are actually verified. True. Know. One thing though I'm trying to understand though is if you were gonna rent and you're doing this, let's call it a good deed because that's what it is for these people. Now you've become a business owner. So yeah. how would you be able to streamline like this project you know if there's a, a washer that needs to be fixed yeah there's no savings to fix the washer yeah right yeah there is an actual guidebook on how to form and maintain a healthy uh, community land trust there's an organization ah. called 
the um, Florida Housing Coalition. Community land trusts are they're complex, but they're efficient if run properly and developed properly. I think I paid, um, I bought the two lots next to this one too. Mm -hmm. I formed a holding company because I, I got carried away and I didn't want to donate more than I had initially decided upon. So I formed a holding company so that the land trust could grow. Mm -hmm. And when it was ready to expand, it could purchase the properties that I, that I had at cost because I didn't, there was no profit incentive. I didn't, there was, you know, I, I paid carrying costs, uh, property taxes for, you know, the years that it took to, to liquidate the property and, and put it into the land trust, you know, to the land trust uh, portfolio. So I had it all thought out. It, it was maybe not executed <laughs> as, as nicely as I'd like to have had it, but um, I think I mentioned to you I bought the, the commercial office building on yep. Avenue A. I wanted us to have a, an office, but we kind of fell victim to the same problem that everyone else does, which is our, our employees couldn't afford to live here. Yeah. And we couldn't afford as a nonprofit to pay them a living wage. How you doing? Hi. You working on this? Huh? It's a mess. Yeah? I'm gonna start cleaning it up, get it ready to rent. Oh, are you with the rural? Steve. I'm with Steve. Ah, Steve. Yes, and I'm we're actually, Steve we're currently Hi. filming a video about oh, okay. uh, I'm injured. what- uh, Hi, Maggie. Maggie, hey, nice to meet you. I heard, you, I heard of you before. <laughs> this, this is just really cool that we're talking about yeah. you. And now you're actually here. So yeah. tell me your name again. Minji. 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 And, and explain to me what, what what rural neighborhoods is? Well, we provide low-income housing yep. and affordable housing throughout the state. Uh, farm worker housing. We have H2. Oh no, it's all uh, this. Sorry. H2 uh, workers, and um, basically we go from now from Big Pine all the way up to Gainesville. And we get into senior housing now. So I, I get it ready, and Jeanette Lopez, which is our compliance officer, she sets it up. So they have a waiting list that gets that we got already. So we go based off that list. Mm -hmm. and then um, they qualify them. I, I, I run all the facilities and all the rehabs and uh, new construction. Yeah, we just provide provide nice houses, nice houses for people that need yeah. affordable housing. Spoke with a nurse uh, that's right around, right down the street in one of the run of these avenues. She told me she was paying $3,500 for a trailer monthly. Oh, I don't doubt it. Yeah, and, I, and I just see the trailer. I mean, it was rough looking. I yeah. mean, when I saw it, I was like, you pay that much? It, I think it's a good thing for the area. They need it. Yeah. And you can tell the demand because we see people asking all the time when they yeah. saw us working around here. Like, what are you doing? Are you renting? Are you, yeah. you know, affordable? How many people on the wait list? I, I but listen, my number's not wrong. I believe it was two hundred. No problem. Thank you. I'm okay. so glad to all meet right. you. It was nice meeting you. <laughs> all right. It's an wow, look at this work. What great timing. How about that. No. Wait. And this is the first year that we've had, we've been able to fund a reserve account for just for things like this. Is there a conversation of control for like with, with bigger corporations who want to buy, like, are you fighting corporations who may want to buy these pieces of property? Nope. Are They're all deed restricted now, so nobody would want them <laughs> because you can't charge market for nine, nine rent. years. Right. Yeah. And as long as I'm alive, I, I hope to be a good steward of the, the good that's been done. I heard a story last night about a, a house that was on the affordable workforce housing registry um, some 20 years ago or so. And the guy who owned it knows for a fact that it's deed restric restricted for 99 years, but it's not being regulated. Ah. And the, the person who owns it now is renting it out for market rate or, or above because nobody's paying attention. Now, that's not to say that that's the case with all the affordable houses on the registry, but nobody really knows how many units we have. So in a sense, you know, the government only has so much, so many opportunities. And, and at one point it's up to private entities such as yourself to right. step in. Yeah. But then you have this problem that happens a lot. You want to step out here and check this out? Yeah. So what I find that happens a lot is uh, the not in my backyard effect, mm, right? That's bad. And then, hard. And then the, the other thing I see is 
Well, who are you to think that you should get a piece of property at a lower rate than what I pay? Right. I've worked hard for a living, so should you. How do you argue that? Right. Um, it's not possible. Maybe at one time in the history of the Keys it was possible to work harder to get ahead, but those days are over. What's happening here? So this was the last piece of property that I bought. It was a trailer, uh, an RV park, and uh, it's 36 lots in total, but uh, these four, I only bought 32 because these, these were not for sale. It came with 17 ro rogos or building allocations. We could have built 17 houses, but I already had a bunch of scattered sites with rogos, and I thought, well, in order to really get the most out of this property, Let's just transfer the Rogos from the scattered sites to this site and we'll build 26 here. I bought it in, I don't know, four years ago. And this is as far as we've gotten. But we, we would never have had the funding had Steve Kirk and Rural Neighborhoods not merged with us. You purchased the land and then you have now sold it for what you bought it for? Yep. And for people who are watching this who have the ability to do something like this. Um, is there a risk involved? There was no risk. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, it's just, it's, I don't think there was any risk because the land was always going to it, appreciate. Yeah. I'd never intended to sell it for profit, but I knew I wouldn't lose any money. So people who have the ability to do something like this, you're saying that there is a pretty good chance or almost 100% chance of whatever they put into it they can yeah, take it back out right. as long as as long as they follow the rules of what the a land trust yep. uh, abides by yeah I, I i think in simple terms if there had been a handful of other people like me and my husband when this is all said and done we will have 35 houses under the community land trust if there had been a handful of other families like like with our mission and vision we could have had 100, 200, I mean, there, there's no limit. It, it's just, it was, it was really um, kind of dictated by funding. Yeah. Because I didn't ask for any variances. I didn't, I didn't uh, ask for any special consideration or whatever. I just replaced one destroyed house with one hurricane resilient, code compliant, affordable home. Hmm. I see a lot of uh, real estate transactions right now that look like uh, stock trades and housing is something that it, it's not a it's not a game of monopoly the people need homes I'd like to see more giving back yeah you know it's always like just the idea of real estate that has always kind of it's a prickly it, subject well, maybe you know? because I'm not in the game I don't fully understand where their head is at and you know I, I appreciate people capitalizing on opportunity we right. are a yeah, capitalistic that's society way. I yep. get it don't you agree that it's gotten out of hand? Yeah. <laughs> when just, people don't have a place to live because they can't afford it, something's so wrong. Then where do you, and, but, and something needs to happen. Something needs to change. And then it goes back to, well, who are we to think that they yeah. shouldn't have the opportunity to sell it for uh, a high profit? So who steps in? Exactly. And so I feel like that's where the government steps in. Yeah. And so... It has to be legislated through policy. And, and affordable housing is needed throughout. You know? Yeah, even everywhere else. I mean, we're not the only people with this problem. That's right. Yeah, I mean, people are going to watch this video and, and realize that what's happening here is happening in their neighborhood. I mean, where I'm from in Clearwater, it's, Same a, stuff. it's like apartment complexes and storage units everywhere. And my sister who bought her yeah. home for like $80,000, somebody's offered her four hundred dollars for it. Her next door neighbor's renting their place for $2,500 a month. And, you know, like, and I think about it, if I'm somebody who was given the opportunity to make a thousand percent of what I paid for my place. Are you gonna turn it down? And then live a really awesome life somewhere else. It'd be hard not to. Yeah. So I get it. We don't, we know what's best for the greater good, but we can't bring ourselves to do it. So is there anybody that we can go and meet? Yeah, I think we okay. should go pay Steve Miller a visit. Okay, let's go see Steve. All right, so we're gonna talk to Steve. Steve is uh, one of my favorites in town, one of the, absolute favorites a lot of people and uh, he is the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce 
Is that right? That's the story we're going with. All right. He's also a radio host. <laughs> what the heck are you doing? Oh, here, here, hold it now. We need a <laughs> Good to see you. Oh, nice to see you. You give the best hugs. Your wife is so lucky. Do I get a hug too? Are famous? Oh, that was nice. <laughs> oh, you're on the board with uh, Land Trust. Yeah, I was president of Land Trust there for a while. Oh. Up until we uh, merged with. Um, Rural neighborhoods. Rural, rural neighborhoods. What are your thoughts on? It's, um, a, it's, it's the only real issue that we have right now. I mean, people could <clears throat> say about anything else, but that is the only real issue that's going on in the Keys right now. But I mean, people are desperate. If you get on to um, um, like social media and look at oh, home, yeah. and, and how many people are just like, oh God, I'm getting evicted and I need a, I need a place. And the reason is that they're not getting evicted. You're like, oh, well, they can't pay their rent. No. These people, like, their houses are selling out from underneath them. Their mm -hmm. landlords are selling their houses. Yeah. And either their rent is going up astronomically, or the people are buying it and either one, moving in, or number two, doing it for some sort of illegal vacation rentals, which we have way too many of those. Mm -hmm. And in my personal opinion, if we got rid of a bunch of those vacation rentals, oh, yeah. that would for the problem, the county needs to take a bit of the course that the city took. The city brought a person on staff specifically to look for people that had vacation rentals and to see if they were legal and above board. Mm -hmm. That's what the county needs to do. Yeah. And um, they need to quadruple the fine that's on it right now. Because right now it's just like the cost of doing business. I think it's like a couple of hundred dollars. So one of the things that I was just telling Maggie is who are we to deny them that opportunity to, to make so much profit? Because you are in, a, especially um, where I was, I was in a zone residential neighborhood, mm -hmm. okay? I didn't move into a commercial place where the uh, place next to me is going to be a business. And when somebody is renting out their house illegally, that is a business that is being done out of there. We need more stringent zoning laws. We need to cut back on the amount of vacation rentals that there are. There has to be more stringent control on those. There are more vacation rentals than there are long-term rentals for people who work here. Yeah, I, well, if you look in Marathon especially, Marathon, it's over half. Over half the homes in the Marathon area, I do believe. How's that sustainable? It's not. And that's why we're in a problem that we cannot build our way out of. And I mean, you know, and that's what the county's trying to do is build their way out of it. You cannot. I mean, you can do it to a degree, but you're going to have to do the other part with legislation. I tell you, um, I really was so happy when I learned that Rick Scott gave the keys 1200 workforce housing rogos mm -hmm. at the end of his term. Because I had been begging George Nugent, who was a commissioner at the time, he might have even been mayor of the county at the time, he was our biggest advocate. I said, find me some more rogos. I need more rogos. I've got all these lots. I need rogos. Oh, well, there's you. We don't have any. We don't have enough. Whatever. And then I said, but Rick Scott, he gave us these. Oh, well, we can't use them. <laughs> what do you mean we can't use them? We need them. You know, and, and we've got all these single family homes that have now, since this, since that time, they've now flipped to vacation rentals. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have the same number of full time residents that we had. Uh, they left. A lot of them have left. Well, and if you've been watching the news here lately, I mean, there's a bunch of fighting going on about being able to use those robos in the first place because there, there were was. suits filed in Key West, Marathon, the day and after he, Keys. The day after he... The, the uh -huh. he and, and, I mean, but these people are still pressing those suits. You coming in, the stuff that you did was just phenomenal. Uh, I mean, you know, somebody to come in and, and, and say, okay, here's the problem. Let's do this about it. But we're less talking, more doing. I yeah. took action. Uh, but the problem is, is we're not going to be able to keep that going. Yeah. The county, which very humorously has said they don't want to be landlords, they are. They are landlords to so many different ventures. They even have their own housing authority. Mm -hmm. But they want to try to step back from it and see if it can be solved through um, the private sector. And the private sector is doing what it can, but. It has limits. It has limits and it's only going to be able to do what it can do. 
until you take care uh, of getting some of these short-term rentals off. Because once those short-term rentals are off, the only other option for them to do is to turn them into long-term rentals. And if they're long-term rentals, then the price is going to go down because people are not going to be able to afford the kind of money they're making. And they are making some sick money off those. And then, of course, down in uh, Key West, especially what they've done with uh, the mooring thing, mm, uh, yeah. as far as the houseboats. Yeah, 90 days they got to move. Uh -huh. and so it's just like keep trotting on the people that need a Don't place you know to like stay. There's a war on, uh, on our workforce. It, it seems like it We does, begrudge yeah. people the decency of an affordable place to live. It does seem to be that it's a war against the common man. <laughs> it really, really is. Mrs. Miller, thank you so much for your time. If I can help you guys out, let me know. Thanks, Bye. Steve. See ya. So this program is never looking to buy the homes. They're looking to buy the land and build uh, inexpensive homes on. Right. Gotcha. And that word inexpensive is really... Um... Well, even like, you know, uh, a piece of lumber is, you know, twice as Everything much as it used to be. So at the same time, you can't really blame the developer either for charging how much they have to charge to, to sell the home. Have you ever eaten here? Mm. I've seen it. I've never been here. Oh, man. This, is, this place is awesome. It's hard talking to some of these people who are like, oh, it's such a great place to come down and we can buy a vacation house. It's like, could you not, actually? <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, like, they always talk, yeah. I mean, they, they, they talk about it a lot because those are the kind of people who would do that kind of thing or can afford to do that kind of thing. Whereas, you know, we're paying, we, like, we actually were just talking inside, we pay very affordable rent for what we have, which is nice. And uh, we are looking at a place today which is $1,000 more expensive than where we're at without utilities which are included in our apartment right now. But it's so small, there's no, like, we have a hard time cooking in it because there's no, like, hood or vents. There's no yeah, smoke there's no detectors. Over, yeah, there's there's no, there's there's like this place that. you're looking at, Vine? No, this no, is the place we're in right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's worked for us because it is a place that we found right at the end of kind of COVID thing, so the prices hadn't been raised or there wasn't a lack of housing that we were having a problem with before. And, but we're never going to be able to find a place that's that cheap and be able to do what we save what we can and do what we can down here without like affordable housing. I mean, it's just like, that's the way it is. Yeah. We had problems with our toilet. <laughs> the toilet they had was this motorized pump system thing that pushed stuff like up into the, their water system. Yeah, so our toilet basically growled at us. Like, yeah, like you flush minutes. it and you'll be like, rrr, 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 and it's, it's like a garbage disposal on that. It was crazy. Oh my gosh. And it was causing a lot of problems and then we had problems with all of our water. We have so many issues with the place. We, our water was backing up, like through our toilet, through our shower, through our sink. All the, all the so we've had like, we have stains all over <laughs> our ceiling. Of, oh my gosh. From leaks. We've talked about going back to California where she lives, but I don't know, like, I like, coming from Pennsylvania, no one tells you you can be a, a boat captain on in the Florida Keys where I'm coming from. And it was something I had to find out when I got here and I'm glad I did. But, you know, it's just something that like, I. Being, being being able to bartend and being able to be a captain, I can find a job pretty much anywhere by the ocean where I want to be pretty quickly. She's the one who has like a professional career with the Noble House hotel chain. So <laughs> no, I love being down here, but like where we live personally, it's it's like a quality of living that we don't have and that we would like to get that we can. When Irma happened, there were fifty two billionaires in Florida at the time? 52 billionaires? 52 billionaires. Okay. And I wrote to some of them. I overnighted letters and uh, I didn't hear back from any of them. I didn't just limit it to, to Florida though, but I also wrote to Oprah Winfrey and Jimmy Buffett. I asked Terry uh, Johnson to, to ask Jimmy and Kenny Chesney, if they'd be interested in doing something like a something a musical festival similar to Farm Aid, and we could call it Homemade, you know? I thought that was a pretty fun idea. And they never responded. And these are people who claim to love the keys. I mean, how can you love the keys and be in a position to help and not help? Yeah. And so who are we gonna meet up with here? Marnie, she owns 
Good Food Conspiracy. She's been here for a long time. It's a very nice lady. Want to sit down at the table? I'm a little busy. Sure. Are you okay? Sharon, are you okay right now? Yes, I am. I just yeah. got some smoothies today. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> hey, Marty, this is I'm Scott, the one you spoke to earlier. So, are you finding it like hard to get people to stick around, or is your this, this job hard for me as an employer? So, you own Good Food Conspiracy 40 years for 40 years, yeah. and for those 40 years, is have you seen an uptick? recently of uh, it being more difficult for people to live here or has it oh, been something I, you've seen even I, in the I'm, 80s? I'm constantly saying goodbye to people. What would you say to someone who says, well you're just not paying enough. You need to pay these people enough money so that they can afford to live here. What, what do you say to those people? Walk in my shoes. That's all you could say. It's not like I'm living, I haven't even, you know, I haven't spent any money on myself at all because I have, I have to take care of the store first of all. Just keep it going so that I can get a, a salary. I think that's a misconception that, uh, that, uh, that, that, there's, that there's housing here because the housing that they talk about being affordable is usually so beyond the means of an average family. So I don't see any of those families in there. Yeah, I thought it was very, very commendable to try to do something like that for the community because without the people, that normal people living here, we don't have anything and the businesses are just, they're just disappearing. The community is very shattered because of that, because there's no, there's no roots, there's nothing taking roots here. Yep. Well, I appreciate your time. It was nice, huh? Good day. Yeah. Uh, well, let's leave this on like a positive note. Yeah, let's try to do that. Yeah. Because there is some, there's, there's opportunities. Yeah. Exactly. Opportunities and also um, awareness has never been greater about the problem. Correct. Um, when I learned about it, it, it was not a new problem, but it was new to me because I didn't know. And you don't know anything till you know it. So um, I don't think there's anyone who doesn't know about the workforce problem and housing problem in the Keys. And uh, I think it will grow to a, a critical mass and it'll It'll affect the right people, and they'll yeah they'll start to try harder and and uh, affect positive change. Yeah. All right. Well, that's we'll we'll end it like that. Okay. And uh, we'll talk tomorrow. Sounds good. I All hope right. you get something, and I didn't m mumble through the whole no, thing. No, no. I think what you did was what you had to say was great. Ah. All right. So long. See ya. Keep doing good things. I know you're never gonna quit. <laughs> wow, what a great, what a great person. Anyways, that's her project. And that is her solution to the affordable housing uh, crisis that we are in. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.